Well, hey, church, welcome back to the Midweek Devotional. Today we are in Ephesians chapter 5, and we're looking at um, walking in love. And as we go through the Midweek Devotional, what it's meant to be is an addition to the Sunday sermons. And so all summer long, we've been walking through this book. Uh, I've loved going through Ephesians. I hope you have as well. And um, what we're trying to do through the Midweek Devotional is add as much extra content into uh, and for this book because it's such a great book that we really can't get through it in just one summer. And so Ephesians chapter 5 is where we are today. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us, gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. But sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you as is proper among saints. Let there be no filthiness, no foolish talk, no crude joking, which are out of place, but instead let there be thanksgiving. For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure or who is covetous, covetous that is an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. This is, uh, of course, a very hard passage, one that you read through and you're like, oh man. And we talked a lot about this a couple Sundays ago. And what Paul is, is doing here is he's reminding us that you speak the language of the kingdom you belong to. And because we have a king who is King Jesus, we should be speaking his language. And his language does not include any of these languages. His language is actually the language of gratitude. Gratitude is the language of heaven. And so uh, as we look at these and as we go through this list, Paul is being very, very firm on, hey, talking about, naming, joking about, teasing about any of these things is not the language of heaven. So don't let them even be named among you. Now, I think that we could, um, as he goes through and he goes into verse six and down, it talks a lot about what you hear as well. And so from looking through verse six down, we could understand that, hey, also, we really shouldn't be listening to people who do talk about those things, which eliminates probably most of our television, most of our binge watching. Um, it eliminates a lot of what we listen to. But in particular, in these first beginning verses, he's being really firm on, hey, don't even talk about immorality. Don't joke about it. Don't tease about it. And this brings up a really important conversation. Uh, this conversation is that these things are very important that we do not even talk about. We should not even name them. We should not joke about them because sexual sins scripturally are, are something that has a lot of weight to them. God is, is very clear in scripture that we should not be living immoral lives. And so much so that in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, it says in verse 18, flee from sexual immorality. Every other person, every other sin a person commits is outside the body. But the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. For you were bought with a price, so glorify God in your body. It's kind of a, a funny side note to this, but um, that verse, that, that uh, do you not know your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, I've always heard that verse applied to why we shouldn't get tattoos. Uh, but, but when you look at the context of what he's talking about, it has literally nothing to do with, with tattoos at all. It has everything to do with, hey, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, so do not be immoral. The scripture is very clear on, on this, that immorality is not God's plan. So much so that it tells us 
we should flee it. And in addition to that, we should not joke about it. We should not tease about it. We should not um, watch or listen to those who do. And he tells us why in, in this verse in, in uh, 1 Corinthians. He says, Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against his own. And what the reason for, for why God is, is being um, so clear in Scripture on, hey, we should not be living this lifestyle, we should not be doing these things, we shouldn't even be talking about them, is because the consequences of these sins is so severe. Often, um, you'll hear people say, oh, the Christians, they don't want to have fun, or they, you know, all of this stuff. And in our culture, immorality is joked about, it's teased about, it's rampant, it's, it's everywhere. And so often as Christians, we will, be, we will allow culture to deceive us into thinking, like, well, we just need to be boring, or, or you know, or, well, we just shouldn't have fun. That's not the case at all. What God is trying to do is God is trying to prevent us from suffering severe consequences. Uh, earlier in the chapter, he says in verse 15, 16 of, of 1 Corinthians 6, Do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? And so the... the the consequences of sin, first of all, are physical, right? This Im immorality um, has these consequences that are very physical. It's, it's very damaging to us, um, so much so that we shouldn't even joke about it. It's a sin against our own body. It's a sin that when we sin, we are damaging and hurting ourselves. We are also damaging and hurting the person we're immoral with, and we are damaging and hurting the person God has for us to be uh, in a clean and, and pure and loving relationship with. And so through one sin, we can hurt multiple, even generations of people through one sin. But also, we're physically damaging ourselves. There are so many um, damaging physical effects and, and um diseases, and all of those things that come from immorality. And God is trying to prevent us from getting those things and from having the consequences like that. But in addition, it's a mental uh, impact on us because what happens when we are immoral is the Bible says we're joined together with that person. So there is, it's so much more than skin deep, Levi Lusco says, because there's this emotional baggage that we carry with us and that person carries with them for the rest of their lives. And many people will say, oh, I don't have that. I feel no guilt. I feel no shame or no remorse. But that's something that they're telling themselves because they do. And so they have to continue to try to further up that lifestyle that they're living to hide and suppress and push down the guilt and the shame that we feel. And so Christ is trying to prevent us from those consequences. He's saying, hey, I don't want you to feel this emotional connection with someone that causes you pain over a series of your lifetime that just causes you emotional baggage, drama, emotional uh, trauma, all of those things. So it's, it's a physical sin. It's also an emotional and a mental and then a spiritual sin because he says at the end, do you not know your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? And so he's saying, hey, you're a part of the kingdom of God. And he does not want the kingdom of God to be immoral and in, in relationship with the kingdom of the world. He wants us to live like citizens of heaven. He wants us to avoid all the damaging effects of sin. And he wants us to live like Christ is our king. This is why he says, hey, don't even discuss this. Don't talk about it. Don't joke about it. Even though it's funny and you get a laugh, there's more to life than just getting people to laugh at you. Don't joke about immorality. Paul is so serious about this in Ephesians. He calls it foolish joking. Don't do that, he says. But instead, he offers us a way to avoid immorality. He offers us a way to avoid talking about these things, and he offers us a way to talk like we are citizens of heaven. And that 
is gratitude. Gratitude prevents immorality. When we're grateful for what God has given us and who God has given us, we do not face such a severe temptation towards immorality. When our language is grateful about our spouse, there are those who are around us who are waiting to pray on us and they hear us speaking gratitude about our spouse that puts them away from trying to tempt us. When our spouse hears us speaking gratefully about them, our spouse is more secure in us. When those around us hear us speaking gratitude, they're more likely to help keep us accountable. Hey, look, you love this person. Let's, let's keep our lives clean. Let's keep our marriage the way God wants it to be. Gratitude is the language of heaven. It is the language that, that we speak when we are in the presence of our King, and it also prevents us from falling into a sin that Scripture says has severe damaging consequences. Not only on us, not only physically, not only mentally, not only emotionally, but also on so many others. And so this is why Paul says in Ephesians chapter 5, hey, don't tease about it, don't joke about it. Instead, be grateful. Instead of when you feel that temptation to say, oh, I'm going to tell this joke that will really get people on my side. Instead, speak gratitude for who you have in your life and what God's placed in your life. Hey, always remember, church, you matter.